Right then, this is the social learning theory of aggression, which is the second social psychological theory that we're looking at. The first one was frustration aggression. Um, now, quick recap on social learning theory. The idea, if you remember, is that we observe a model um, and we imitate them, but only if we're motivated to do, to do so and if we're capable of reproducing the behaviour. So the idea is that we're motivated depending on who the role model is and depending on how they how their behavior is reinforced so we're reinforced d indirectly or vicariously uh, depending on what the consequences are for our model so for example if we see someone doing something uh, like pushing into the dinner queue um, and then they are uh, punished for doing that then we're less motivated to um, to reproduce their behaviour because we're vicariously uh, punished as well because we observe their behaviour and then we don't imitate them it because we don't have the motivation we can see that the consequences would be negative so uh, just uh, these are in your booklet uh, just some cheesy acronyms to maybe help you remember some of this information in an exam some of these details on the left, this ARRM, I'm sure you've come across this before. These are, are the things that, um, th basically the things that happen when social learning takes place. We pay attention to a model. We need to have the ability to remember what has happened, to retain the information. Um, we, If we're capable, we will then reproduce the behavior depending on our motivation. Um, which is determined by a number of different things. Um, these factors here, again, mischief, this is just like a, a, a little acronym with some of these different factors in. Modeling, um, we need to consider the effect of the model. If it's some something, if it's someone, sorry, that we admire, we're obviously more likely to reproduce their behavior. Indirect learning, don't forget about the effects of vicarious learning. If their um, if their behavior, if the model's behavior is positively reinforced, then uh, we experience vicarious reinforcement, and so that's what causes us to to be motivated to reproduce their behavior. Self-efficacy. That's just another word for for having the capability to reproduce um, the behavior characteristics of the model um, again positive characteristics mean we're more likely to reproduce increase in aggression through vicarious reinforcement and then the value of cognition and memory all of these are, are just different things different factors that affect social learning just a way of remembering some of these different factors and you can look at all those with a little bit more explanation as well in your activity booklets Right, so when we look at the social learning theory for aggression, the key study that we look at is Bandura, and you're al already aware of this experiment, so I'll just summarise in brief to remind you, if you're not confident, you'll need to go and read this again in your activity booklet, there's a bit more information. But basically, Bandura had three groups of children, um, some who viewed an aggressive model, uh, playing aggressively with a Bobo doll and some other toys, some who viewed a non-aggressive model, who ignored the Bobo doll and played with the non-aggressive toys nicely, um, and some who didn't view a model at all. Um, and then they were mild frustration was caused in these children, like they started to play with the toy, and then they were uh, told that they couldn't play with it. And then they were observed to see with the same toys how they would behave. Um, and what they found was the highest aggression levels came from those people. In the first group, those children who'd observed the aggressive model playing with this Bobo doll, and it, it, the, the model had played in a particular way using particular words like pow and boom and throwing the doll around and stuff. Um, and they, it, you could see in the original experiment these children copying the exact actions of this model. Um, and that was directly related to which group they'd been in. 
And so this is a really good key piece of, of research that supports the social learning theory. So it's really important that you're able to describe this study in good detail. So if, if you're not really confident with that study, I would suggest you pause the video now, go away and have a, a read of the information and summarise the study for yourself so that you are really confident with that study. If we then go on to evaluate the study then, um, it's really good study. It shows the process of social learning quite nicely, that they're observing and then they're imitating a model. Um, however, there are some key criticisms. It's not real aggression. It's on a bobo doll. Um, if you think about um, real life, children are taught not to hit other children. And so you have to question whether they would do the same thing in real life if they observe another child hitting another as, as someone else will they go away and copy in the same way you could really question that because they they may well uh, know that they're not allowed to do that in in and they wouldn't necessarily know with a bobo doll that they're not meant to do that or that it's a negative thing so it, there's definitely some question about would you have got the same results if you were looking at um, if they were observing a model who was hurting another person um, and obviously you can't ever do that experiment in psychology because it's totally unethical so I mean it's good that we've got this experiment but just to bear in mind that potential um, problem lack of, of validity it's got high internal validity in a number of ways good controls you've got the three groups well controlled and, and good procedures uh, easy to replicate all of these things um, but then you've also got low external validity because the population was children entirely taken from the Stanford University nursery um, so they will all have certain things in common if they're the children of staff at the university um, potentially um, all very intelligent children um, potentially middle class uh, and so on um, at that in the 1950s and then you have also low ecological validity as well because it's taking place in in a lab as well at, at the university so both of those things mean that we should question can we generalize this to other children outside this setting and other uh, uh, situations outside this setting demand characteristics when they were asked about the experiment afterwards a lot of the children talked about um, c they thought that they were supposed to do that um, so it, it's not necessarily like demand characteristics in terms of they're working out the aim of the experiment like we normally talk about but it's it could well be demand characteristics in that they think that that's what they're expected to do they're watching someone do something so they say oh that's what they want me to do um, and there's some quite good evidence if you look into that um, where you can see that children clearly think that that they were supposed to do it um, so they're just kind of doing what the experiment demands of them rather than it being a natural reaction that, that they're, they're going to copy someone um, and then the last point to make is that it's a short-term effect can we really say that if a child goes and copies um, someone hitting a bobo doll that, that that's gonna that means long aggression is going to happen long term it, it is really different looking at the process of of um, a child becoming aggressive which is you know potentially a long-term behavioral trait uh, where they're going to be aggressive in a number of different situations and being aggressive in this one situation where they're copying five minutes later an aggressive behavior like if they see an adult being aggressive to another adult does that mean that like a year later they're going to copy that behavior in a in a similar situation not necessarily so it, you've got to think about the fact that again that's questioning external validity whether we can generalize to to other situations and then we've got three things to say when we're talking about social learning theory um, this explanation of aggression um, in terms of evaluation it's the first point to make is that this is quite a simplistic explanation in terms of it's ignoring lots of other um, other potential explanations like biological factors we've looked at testosterone and 
different neural um, factors that affect it, such as the, the role of the amygdala and serotonin. And we've looked at a number of different things there. And actually, the social learning theory suggests that it is literally these social factors that cause aggression and argues rigidly on the side of nurture, um, excluding any sort of um, discussion of nature. And actually, that's not adequate because we know that, that some of these um, different biological elements do play a part. And so actually, aggression would be better explained by taking both of those into account, both nature and nurture. Um, and then the second point that we can, the second, Chris, uh, well, this is a positive um, point, to say that actually social learning theory explains cultural variations. Um, we talked about the fact when we're looking at evolutionary explanations that it ought to, if, if the evolutionary explanation was true, then um, we ought to find that it was uh, that rates of aggression are similar globally, and they're not. Um, and the social learning theory explains the fact that different cultures have really different rates of aggression. So you've got a couple of examples in your booklet there. The Arapesh is a really non-aggressive culture, um, and the Mundugamore is a really aggressive culture. And the fact that um, social learning theory talks about us observing and imitating aggressive models would really explain these big differences in aggressive aggression rates between cultures. Um, and then the last point to make is that we've got really positive implications for the real world of this um, theory from this theory. Um, so first of all, we can explain various different acts of aggression that have occurred in real life murder cases, such as people imitating Chucky, as in your book. There's also cases of um, people imitating video games with school shootings and stuff that I'm, I'm sure you've probably come across. Um, and then equally, um, it, this explanation is really important implications for parents and for society. There are some society. There are, there's a society outlined in your booklet that talks about um, th where they remove aggressive models um, so that other children don't. Uh, imitate aggression. It's really important for parents so that they can make sure that they're not modelling aggression for their children and um, equally modelling positive behaviours that their children can copy. So that's a really good point from the social learning theory. It's got really positive real life implications that we can really influence the behaviour of the next generation in a positive way to make sure that they don't grow up aggressive. So that is the social learning theory of aggression.